Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about inflation, which is I think something that has been affecting most of us here in the U.S. recently. And people are talking about inflation a lot in the political sphere. They're, they're saying like, oh, vote for this candidate, don't vote for that candidate because of inflation. And I'm hearing wildly contradictory arguments. And there's a lot of stuff that I don't like about how people are talking about this. I think people on both sides of the political spectrum are being pretty irrational about how they're thinking about cause and effect with inflation, and I want to talk a little bit about how inflation works. Uh, I'm not, what this video is not about, this is not about how inflation affects you. We all know that. The prices of things go up. Um, what I'm talking about is what, what causes inflation and what potentially can fix it. And I want to start by criticizing the Democrats a little bit. So please, wherever you are in the political spectrum, uh, <laughs> the Democrats have been in power for some time, and they passed this thing called the Inflation Reduction Act. This, uh, this legislation pissed me off a lot. And the thing that pissed me off the most about it was its name. Um, the, the name seems to imply that it is intended to fight inflation or, or reduce inflation. And whether or not the people who authored this know this or not, you know, I don't know what their intentions are, I'm not in their heads. Uh, but economists analyze this, this package and they generally agree that it doesn't do anything to fight inflation. And so I think this name is a little bit dishonest. Now maybe some of the people making this bill had good intentions. Maybe they were trying really hard and they just didn't understand economics and this was their best attempt, but it was sort of ill-conceived, whatever. Or maybe they were intentionally being dishonest. Maybe there were people and they're like, hey, uh, I really want to advance this agenda. I want to spend on this, that, the other, you know, infrastructure spending, other, other programs. And they're like, people care about inflation now, so let's name it the Inflation Reduction Act as a PR, uh, a PR scheme, a PR move. Uh, so that's the other possible interpretation. And in all likelihood, I think there probably was a little bit of both of these going on. Whatever the cause, I don't like it. The, the bill didn't really address inflation, and as I will explain, it couldn't really address inflation because of how inflation works. Um, whether or not you agree with what's in the bill, you know, there are people who like it, there are people who don't. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about what it did. So that, that's one thing that I don't like. And I think, I think that bill is part of a broader scheme of things. And this is something that I think a lot of people in the population don't really understand. Uh, the legislature doesn't really have a lot of power to do much about inflation. And the executive branch doesn't really have a lot either, the presidency. Uh, what, what controls inflation? Well, inflation is really a question of the currency supply. Inflation is about prices. Prices go up. When do prices go up? You can think of it as happening when there is more money than there was before, and the amount of goods and the services cir circulating in the economy stays relatively the same, or at least increases slower than the currency supply. So as the currency supply increases, because we have a free market, you can price things however you want, because of that, things start getting more and more expensive. The currency becomes worth less, because there's more of it. And you think about this, this is kind of intuitive. If you have a lot of something and you get more and more of it, it, it becomes worth less. Whereas if that resource is scarce, it becomes worth more. So as money is scarce, uh, it, you know, it becomes worth more, prices stay low. Uh, as there gets to be more money floating around, uh, it's worth less, prices of things increase. That's the basic idea behind inflation. Um, how does the government affect inflation? How does it regulate it? Well, in the U.S., as with most major economies, there is a reserve banking system. So you have the Federal Reserve. Now, I'm not here to argue whether the Federal Reserve is good or bad. Uh, there's some serious problems with it, which I'd love to get into with another video. 
Uh, there are also some very major benefits of it, which I also <laughs> would be glad to talk about in another video. I'm not here to say the Fed is good or bad, it's just that is how, in the U.S., that is how uh, inflation is regulated. That's how the currency supply is regulated. Um, one of the reasons why the U.S. economy is so strong is that we have one of the most stable currencies in the world, and it has been stable for a very long time. And that stability causes people to hold on to U.S. currency. Like, if you go to some countries, there are even co other countries that use the U.S. currency. For example, Ecuador. Uh, there are other places where even if it's not the official currency, people informally use the U.S. dollar. You can go to a lot of countries that have unstable currencies and people will, will trade with, with dollars, like actual physical cash, U.S. dollars, because it's more stable than their national currency. So that stability is a source of strength for the U.S. And what I want to talk about in this video, I think one of the reasons the U.S. currency is so stable is that the Fed, the Federal Reserve System, has been separated from the political system. It is separate from Congress, and it is separate from the executive branch, the presidency. The president can't just go to the Fed and say, hey, I want more currency. Hey, uh, you're printing too much currency. I want you to damp it down. Like, th that's not how it works. The Fed is an independent, uh, an independent entity, and it has its own, uh, its own board of governors and its own way of doing things. And frankly, this is the way I like it. I want it to be this way. Now, there's some people out there who are going to cry like, oh, that's the deep state. These are unaccountable bureaucrats. They're not elected. They're not, uh, not answerable to Congress. They can do what they want. And I'd say, yes, there's a degree to which that's true. They were given that power through Congress. But uh, there's a degree to which this is true. They are these sort of separate bureaucrats insulated from the political system. But I personally think that's a good thing. I do not want the currency supply to be subject to political whims. People can be wildly irrational when they think about politics. All you need to do is just look at how people are talking about this 2024 election, and you will see irrational, all sorts of irrational things being said about it. I don't trust the population as a whole to make sound decisions about currency. Like, I, I would rather there be this independent board of people who are experts, people who study this stuff, they have their whole career focused on this stuff, and their single job is to try to maintain the stability of the U.S. economy through keeping inflation reasonable. Like, we don't want it to be too high, we also don't want it to be too low. It needs to, you know, it needs to have like a low and predictable rate of inflation. That's what's ideal. So, um, I want it to stay independent. So, how does that relate to the political system and the, the choice? Like, we have this choice coming up, the 2024 election. Who do you vote for? Who do you vote for for president? Who do you vote for for Congress? Things like that. And I think these votes are very, very important. And I think that inflation is related to these things, and I think it's good to think about inflation. What I do not want you to do, and this is, ju this is just stupid, a lot of people think like this, and I, I just want people to throw this out, whether you're Republican, Democrat, if you're thinking, oh, prices have been increasing, that means people aren't doing their jobs, that means that the president isn't doing their job, that means that Congress isn't doing their job, that's not how it works. And similarly, you know, so, so right now Democrats hold the White House, uh, and, and Democrats pass that Inflation Reduction Act, but there's similarly Democrats who are like, oh yeah, like, Joe, you know, Joe Biden got inflation under control, and, and the Democrats got inflation under control because of this Inflation Reduction Act. Like, no, that, that's like bullshit. Like, this is just, this is not how it works. The, the inflation has been, you know, there are factors that cause it to go out of control sometimes. But the, the aspect of our government that keeps it under control is the Federal Reserve System, and it does it by setting interest rates. Uh, it's not always going to be to everyone's liking. Like, if interest rates go up, you want to buy a house, you want to take out a loan of any sort, it's more difficult for you. Um, other times, like, if you just bought a house when rates are high and then the rates go down, you might be annoyed. It's just like, oh shoot, I could have gotten a better rate. Uh, you know, it, it's not always a happy thing, but I think in, in general, 
they do a pretty good job of keeping the U.S. currency stable. And if you want to see the testimony, just look, look at how the world views the U.S. dollar. That the, the world respects the U.S. dollar, and they have for decades now. Like, it is the stable currency that a lot of people rely on, and I want to keep it that way. So, uh, what's happening in this election? There is exactly one thing that I think is related to inflation that you can vote on, and that is the independence of the Federal Reserve. And there's one key difference between the Democrats with Kamala Harris and the Republicans with Donald Trump, and that is that Harris has committed to maintain the independence of the Federal Reserve, keep it apolitical, keep it separated from the executive branch, so that the, the president will continue to not have, have much or any say in monetary policy. Donald Trump, on the other hand, and the Republicans have said that they want more influence in the Federal Reserve. Trump wants to be able to tell them what to do. I think this is very dangerous. I think this is an abuse of executive power. This is giving more power to the executive branch. You know, the irony is a lot of people voting for Trump call themselves conservatives. This is not at all a conservative thing to transfer more power to the executive branch. Uh, it goes against the whole trend of American conservatism, which is to keep small, the government small and keep the executive branch, in particular, limited in power. So Trump wants to threaten this. And I think this is very dangerous. And I think, I'm not going to say it's going to make inflation better or worse. I think the one thing that it would do is it would threaten the stability of the U.S. dollar. And the stability of the U.S. dollar is a great source of strength of our economy and stability of our economy globally. And, and it's not just our economy, it's the stability and strength of other economies, because other economies depend both directly and indirectly on the U.S. dollar, and we would threaten them too. And this would just, I think this would be pretty disastrous if we broke down that barrier, that independence between the executive branch and the Federal Reserve System. I want to keep the monetary system and the, the board that regulates it, the Fed, keep them independent. Um, the system has worked for a long time. Sometimes it's painful, but believe me, it would be a lot worse if we were having a situation like, look at a country like Argentina that has experienced hyperinflation. That's terrible. That could happen to us if we break down this uh, independence. Also, you could have deflation. That can be disastrous. It can be terrible for businesses. Imagine you, you buy stock for your business and suddenly it's worth less because your currency is increasing in value. It, it punishes any sort of brick-and-mortar retailer. We can prevent all of this by continuing as is with the Federal Reserve System. Not a perfect system. We still are going to have economic problems, uh, recessions, depressions from time to time. Um, doesn't fix every problem. There's still a need for Congress. There's still a need for the President. But at least we have a stable currency. That's what this is about. That's what inflation is about. I hope that we can start talking about this issue in a more rational way. I hope that whether, you know, regardless of who you're voting for, you see the importance of this. That's what I'm trying to convince people of. So yeah, thank you for your time, and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.